In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. As most of you know, just last month, September 5th, 2019 to be exact, thanks to the skill and the expertise and the patience of our exploration committee, dedicated men and women of our community, we finalized the purchase of the Vallis property adjacent to our campus. Some four acres of beautiful prime land. Lukumi, Lukumi, as uh, Greek realtors like to say, is sweet. This addition, my friends, is an historic achievement in the proud heritage and development of our community. A community with humble beginnings, with just a handful of immigrants whose first services were held on a lonely loft in downtown Raleigh on South Salisbury Street in April of 1924. That's 95 years ago. The vision, toil, and industriousness of those early founders of this holy church was not in vain after all. From the world beyond, I like to think that they are looking down upon us proudly, and smiling, and encouraging us to move forward. To move forward because this historic purchase opens up new vistas, a new vision that I think exceeds their own expectations, I'm guessing. And they would like us to do what they did. They don't want us to just admire their work. They want us to become like them. They want to see something of themselves in us to build and beautify and be daring for this community, this house of God. The possibilities are now endless. Perhaps even having future festivals on our own beautiful campus with plenty of parking that's going to be available. And more importantly, with a Byzantine, a new Byzantine temple looming in the background. Imagine, if you will, hundreds and thousands of people from the Triangle area coming for tours of this new sanctuary. You can be sure that converts will become on the way because of beauty, orthodox beauty. How did the great Russian author put it? Dostoevsky. Beauty will save the world. But now, let's come down from Mount Olympus a little bit here. And, uh, you know, over the years, I have learned in this long process of planning and building that in order to find a proper place to build, you have to test the soil. You have to see if the conditions of the soil are viable in order to uh, support a new structure. This testing is done by a technique called boring. Boring. Not my sermons, but this technique is called boring. A uh, process when you actually bore into the soil, drill, to test the conditions of the soil. Now the reason I'm mentioning all this in the first place is because of today's gospel lesson, the parable of the sower. The sower in this parable, of course, represents Christ himself. The seed that he spreads out is, represents the word of God. And the four types of soil that the seeds fall upon in today's gospel lesson are the different hearts of men. So today, I would like to invite you to do some spiritual boring into your own selves your deep selves to test the condition of your soul and to determine if the soil of your heart is viable to sustain a temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell. Let's look. Let's be a little introspective into our own selves without defense. The Gospel talks of four types of soil. The first type of soil, the seed that fell upon 
the footpath soil that has become hard and beaten down. This type of soil, my friends, represents people who are hard and coarse-minded. People whose minds are shut and unreceptive because of their prejudgment of others and because of their biases. These ego-driven, willful people justify their bad behavior and their sin rather than confess it. Not even the word of God can penetrate a hard heart, my friends. Of all the soils that we will look at today, this is by far the worst and the most dangerous. This type of soil will not support or sustain a temple of the Holy Spirit to dwell. This is not a good place to build. The next type of soil described in today's parable is the rocky soil. There is no depth here, no moisture, no chance for the seeds to sprout roots. This category of soil represents people who are shallow, superficial, intelligent, yes, curious, no doubt, but too impulsive, too quick to give up on anything that does not produce instant results, too quick to give up on anything that involves patience and development. Let's move on to the third specimen. The third soil is the soil that is full of thorns. This soil represents the souls of those who are preoccupied, preoccupied and dazzled by the riches of this life. This is not to suggest that there are not good people here or with good intentions. The soil, the soil is decent. If it wasn't, weeds would not be able to grow on it. But the problem here is the weeds that do grow represent the seductions and the allurements of this fallen life. People in this category allow the distractions to come in and choke the good seed. And so these people never fully mature, never quite reach their full potential, because unfortunately, they give first-rate loyalty to second-rate causes. Now, as far as the fourth soil, the good, rich, fertile soil that produces fruit a hundredfold, I don't know. To tell you the truth, I don't even want to talk about the fourth soil because I can't relate to it. The only thing I can relate to is trying to identify my own wounded disposition found in the first three soil samples and to have an honest effort to till and cultivate my hard-pressed, compacted, stony, weed-infested heart. Perhaps you too can identify something of yourselves in the first three soil samples. If so, let's work together to till the soil of our hearts, irrigating them with the tears of repentance and breaking up our rocky and weedy hearts with the plow of holy confession and a life of repentance. In fact, Side by side, my friends, which is the only way we can get through this life. We need each other. We need each other's support and help and understanding side by side. Let us commit ourselves to the building of two temples, a new one on Lead Mine Road and another one in our hearts for the Holy Spirit to dwell. God bless you today. Amen.